run, it's uh, it's almost they've just fallen off a cliff type of thing. I mean, the performances have gone from brilliant in the blink of an eye. Though you know, it doesn't look like they're going to score goals. Um, and you can reel off all the teams that have come to Anfield in recent times. You know, Liverpool have not deserved to to, uh, to beat them. They're not creating too many chances, and you have to say that Everton deserved their victory. Yeah, and just to put that into context, we talked about Anfield being such a fortress with that long 68-match unbeaten run. Liverpool have now lost four consecutive league games in a row at home for only the second time in their entire history. So, we are not just because of the bragging rights, not because of the pride, they are level on points with the champions Liverpool. 40 points and Everton have a game in hand. That's away on Aston Villa, who themselves are now two games in hand, uh, one place and four points behind them. City, of course, as I say, play Arsenal tomorrow. Manchester United play then as well and Leicester. Chelsea in fourth with 43 points after that one point at St Mary's earlier on. Fulham up next, a must win against the bottom club, Sheffield United. If they do win, they take that advantage to just three points before Newcastle play at Old Trafford tomorrow evening. And kind of letting ourselves down, but more importantly, letting the, the, the blue side of the city down. Um, you know, it's been hard. You know, you can put a face on it and uh, try and brush it off. But, you know, it does when you're... Basically, I've been in the city for 10 years. It's, it's difficult to take and you feel sorry for the fans and fed up coming out, coming out with the same cliches after, after losing them. So, to be honest, uh, thank the manager for the way he set us up. The players put in an unbelievable shift and, uh, you know, uh, that was against the champions, so we're, we're delighted. Just to, just to say, for me personally, it was, I had to follow Andy Robertson. I think the last time I had a job like that, I was at Stamford Bridge following Ashley Cole about the pitch. But, um, He's a great player and I just I tried to stay with him as, as much as I could. And as a team, it was just to, to compete and, and try and play, uh, break the press when we could. But listen, when you're, when you're holding the lead, uh, it is difficult to be brave and try and play it from the back. And we probably didn't play as much as we would have liked, but we got the result. Uh, Dominic came on and made a difference. And I think for us now, move on from it as quick as possible because... It can't just be a, a celebration for this. We need to start moving the football club forward. And that, that goes back to like the likes of Fulham at home and West Ham at home. That's, that's where we need to start uh, being better all round. In that team 11 years ago, with Leon Osman, that before today was the last one to win a Merseyside derby. And you know how much it means to him, perhaps more than the others in the dressing I know how much it feels to me. I just haven't, haven't watched them. But yeah, he's, he's a guy who has took the burden not single-handedly, but he's felt every defeat. You could see it on his face. I know him personally. He, he struggles to go home after games. He weighs heavily on him. So to be part of it, not only that, but to captain the club to that first victory in such a long time, you can see it on his face, how happy he is. Um, but he's also keen to state that this isn't just the one thing that's happening to Everton this season. They want to move the club forward. We're not going to dwell on this, trying to move forward, but... What a terrific performance and, and great game for Everton. Yeah, now, well, of course, when they did win in 1999, when Michael was a Liverpool player, <laughs> they got the goal after four minutes. It was slightly earlier today. A disappointing mm. one from Liverpool's point of view, first of all. I think so, but I don't think it was any huge mistakes. Um, you know, I think Kabak here, he will get the blame for it. He clears his lines there, but he's, he's, he's got his man, really, uh, Hammers. And then he's probably looking at that and Richarlison's making a, a great run in behind him. But you see Richarlison, he just, he, he's offside. And he's in an offside position. He just gets himself onside for a split second, and then he's off. Fantastic diagonal run and a lovely weighted pass, uh, Ozzy, from, uh, from Hammers. Yeah, and a great finish. And just the space I thought that Everton tried to play on Liverpool and the space between Trent and, and, and Kabak running off him, running in behind him for Richarlison. Got the goal really early, and uh, it was a terrific goal from Everton's point of view. And then they had something to build on, something to protect... And then, as Seamus Coleman said, they brought Dominic Calvert-Lewin on, who was involved in the awarding of the penalty. Now, it was interesting to listen to, to Jim Beglin um, at the ground say he didn't think this was a penalty. Well, I completely disagree. I even think it was, it, it was a red card as well that was maybe overlooked. But it was terrific from Richarlison initially in the build-up. Dominic Calvert-Lewin proving that his hamstrings are all OK with that run forward. And it's a decent enough uh, shot and a really good save, I think, from Alisson. But he couldn't you know, prevents it from falling to that space. You see that runs, terrific bit of pace from, from Dominic Calvalu. And just there, there's certainly contact from, from Trent Alexander-Arnold. I don't know you th how you thought that was a penalty, Michael. No, I thought it was a penalty as well. I think you can see there, Trent Alexander-Arnold hooks his leg up. He lifts it up and he almost hooks him down. And I thought it was a penalty as well. I actually thought the referee had an excellent game. He gave it first time, he went to check his decision and gave it again. And I thought it was the right decision. 
OK, uh, let's have a quick word with uh, Dermot Gallagher. Uh, first of all, Dermot, to check that you agree with Leon and, and Michael that you felt that was, that was a penalty? I do. I think both of them have summed up really, really well. Um, as Michael says, he, he hooks his leg up. Leon said, you know, he thought it was a penalty straight away. He thought it may have been a red card. Um, I think both of them, yeah, I'm, I'm in agreement with the penalty. Now, what about a potential red card for Trent Alexander-Arnold here? Amazing how you change your mind in life, Steve. My gut reaction, as everyone will tell you, it's up, up in our office, I said red card. I looked at it again, and that's when I suddenly see Phillips alongside Alison there, I changed my mind. I was talking to Leon, and having seen it now, uh, Leon made a really good point of even if he's there, once he's past Alison, he can roll it in the net. Uh, Phillips has got no hands. But when you look at it, when the foul occurs, Phillips is actually behind Trent Alexander, so he wouldn't have caught him. So I think. At the time, I can understand why the referee didn't think it was a red card. With the analysis that we've got on these video pictures, I think, as you watch it run out here, you see there Trent Alexander with Calvert-Lewin. There's the slide, there's the hook, and Phillips is behind him. So as Leon says, even it, it, looking at that, it's going to be a red card. Even if Phillips had got back to this position here, it still would have been a red card for me because, as Leon said, there's only one man, Alisson's on the ground, and he would roll it into the net. Yeah, perhaps not today, but that for Liverpool's fortunate in terms of a suspension for Alexander-Arnold. It certainly is, yeah. Yeah, I mean, Calvert-Lewin was about to tap it into an empty net, so he definitely prevented a, a goal-scoring opportunity. We also must mention Nat Phillips in the, in the build-up to that poor mistake, trying to nick the ball um, in front of Richarlison, who's a big, strong lad himself. Sometimes you just have to let the attacking player have the ball. But, yeah, I totally agree with, with Dermot and Leon. I thought it was a penalty and possibly Liverpool got lucky without getting a red card. Thanks, Derm. And then, of course, lifelong Evertonian Gilfie Sigerson is so reliable from the spot, isn't he? He has become reliable, yeah. The, he had a, a spell where he missed a couple, but, you know, last few he's been, he's been very assured. He looks at the goalkeeper, look at the happiness, relief. He's felt the weight, I think, of that penalty, standing up and taking it, knowing how crucial it was in the, in the lives of Evertonians, with it being such a long time since that victory. But... Delighted to see it go into the back of the goal. Now, you heard Seamus Coleman talk about his particular role on Andy Roberts, and he thanked the manager for getting a plan to get us the result, and one that they all bought into. They did. Uh, they defended really well, Everton, today. When called upon, the goalkeeper made excellent saves. That was one that even the players celebrated. You won't see it out of shot, but they realised the significance of that save. But you see there, Everton, they're quite playing as a back five at times. That allowed... Mason Holgate to come in from the right back position and make that kind of stop. Even when they were called upon mistakes, they were in, they relied on each other. I've got to be honest, Michael, I don't think Liverpool created too much against them really today. No, it was one of those games when you expect in Liverpool, you know, I was going to say Liverpool of old, but Liverpool of a few months ago to be absolutely pounding the Everton goal at the end and, and you're thinking, right, when's the goal going to come? But you never really sit in now, especially at Anfield in the last couple of months, thinking, yeah, Liverpool are going to score an, you know, an abundance of, of goals. They don't even create too many chances. I mean, this is the best of them. Shots from 20-odd yards from a tight angle going right down the middle of the goal. I mean, it's just not the Liverpool we know. And obviously, Jurgen Klopp has got a huge job to rekindle that flame. He certainly has. And Jurgen Klopp has lost a Merseyside derby for the 